Hello, folks. I'm John Myrie, and welcome to the Wisconsin Northland Outdoors. On this week's show, we have tips and reports for you from Jarrett McCarthy down at Hayward Bait and Bottle. And then we talk early open water fishing and ice fishing and a lot more with Hayward Area Fishing Guide Tom Leahy. And then lastly, some great early open water fishing tips for you from Fishing Guide Steve Jensen. Lots to cover on this week's show, all coming up right after these messages. At Hayward Power Sports, we know it's fun to roam the boat shows. But remember, we have awesome deals every day, and we'll be here long after the shows. As a sampling of our Lund inventory, we have a Pro V Bass, an 1875 Crossover, and an 1875 Impact set up in our outdoor showroom. Buy one today and claim huge Lund rebates up to $7,500. Plus, we'll have it ready to go for you right away this spring, and we'll even include free storage for next winter. Come check out our everyday boat show at Hayward Power Sports, just 10 minutes east of Hayward on Highway 77, or online at haywardpowersports.com. Riding along in my automobile Bumping into things unexpectedly? Make your first choice for collision repair. Ernie's Auto Body, featuring the most advanced collision repair facility in northwest Wisconsin. With a state-of-the-art spray, baked-down, draft paint booth for that better-than-new finish, laser technology for precision frame alignment, loaner cars available, computerized estimates, written guarantees, and documented unmatched customer service, the clear choice is Ernie's Auto Body, south of Hayward on Highway 63 and Nursery Road, where quality is no accident. Lynn's Custom Meats and Catering welcomes you to stop by for their great lunch menu. And while you're there, Lynn's also has a great selection of custom cut meats and sausages, as well as many varieties of snack sticks, jerky, fresh cheese curds, and much more. Lynn's is open Mondays through Fridays from 9 to 5.30 and 9 to 4 on Saturdays. Lynn's Custom Meats and Catering in Hayward. Today, anglers fish longer. Today, anglers fish harder. Today, anglers rely more than ever on their electronics. It all comes down to catching more fish, and today, anglers rely on Amped Outdoors lithium batteries, period. Visit AmpedOutdoors.com today to power your outdoor experience. We're recording this week's show down in Hayward, Bait and Bottle, talking to Jared McCarthy. And Jared, uh, you know, there's still mice out there, but it seems like it's getting less all the time from what I'm hearing. Which is nice, because I think everybody's uh, sick of the is there ice, is there not ice kind of question, and everybody's just ready to get spring. I seen a report on Facebook up on Nelson Lake. There was a bunch of open water down by the dam, even. Yeah, I saw that same thing, too. Um, you know, just headed up to Big Water uh, this weekend or what have you. I saw a whole bunch of open water up there. So, just oddly enough, even with the cold, stuff's opening up. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with the hours of daylight, you know, where day, hours it's warmer. And, you know, we just haven't had that much ice. I, my neighbor was just telling me, the guys were telling him they only saw eight inches of ice out on Moose the other day. And that's that's incredible for this time of year. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and we got some warmer temps coming up here. I see a handful of days are going to be in the, you know, mid to high 40s <laughs> out there. Have a little bit of warm wind coming up. So, yeah, you know, we've got a little bit of ice out there left to fish, but it uh, seems like it's drawing to a close sooner than later. What to be heard as far as the fishing? I, I'm a suspect of most of the people are after the panfish. And that's what we're hearing, too. You know, we've got some guys that are out catching uh, some nice northern sun tip-ups, and this is the kind of time of year that you can get out there and do that. A lot of uh, dead baits having some success right now, but, yeah, a lot of guys out targeting bluegills and crappies right now. You know, and you mentioned the pike. They're getting some nice pike, you think, or just smaller stuff? Uh, some nice pike. There's a lot of numbers out there right now, but, uh, yeah, we're seeing some nice pike come through the shop here, some mid to upper 30s. You know, and then we've got lakes up here talking about that where the DNR is actually encouraging people to harvest them 24, 26 inch pike because they historically they weren't in a lot of these lakes and now they're in there and they're, they're kind of raising heck with the muskie population and stuff. But the pike are actually, you know, some people shy away from them because the live bones, the slime and all that stuff, but they're actually very good eating fish. Yeah, they abs- absolutely are. So um, before I came up here, there's a taxidermist down by me and uh, he told me a story about you know, the kind of fish that he likes to eat. And we were talking and uh, I said, all right, in your opinion, what are the, you know, the best table fare fish? And he looks at me and he says, well, pike is your number one. You know, pike are really, really good. They're good pickled. They're good fried, you know, any kind of way. I was like, okay, what's your number two? And he's like, number two is bluegills. Bluegills are really sweet. You can get a lot of them. They're really good. And I was like, yeah, okay, what's number three? And he's like, well, number three are your relative fish. And I kind of looked at it weird and I'm like, we need relative fish. Like I get that crappie and bass are kind of all fish and they're related. He's like, no, 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 you're talking about it in the wrong way, a relative fish. Everything else is a fish that you feed your 
relatives when they come over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny, but you know, a good tip, you know, getting the pike, uh, you get the Y bones out. There's all kinds of stuff on YouTube for that. And one of the guys, Eric Tui, gave me a good tip here that uh, he says take a rag and, and soak it with white vinegar and wipe it off, and it takes the slime right off, so you're not dealing with the slime. Yeah, they are slimy critters, aren't they? You bet. You know, and uh, have you heard anybody getting up at trout or anything? I know that that uh, the rivers are going to be really accessible. Yeah, I know I will be in the next couple of days here pretty quick. Uh, haven't seen anybody out there, haven't heard anybody sneaking out there yet, but, uh, you know, we've got some nice low snow out there. We shouldn't have a whole lot of runoff this spring. I, I think it's going to be a really good year for uh, for trout fishing on the rivers. Yeah, and you also have, I was referring to, besides trout, you've got rough fish. Quite a few guys go upset on the riverbank and, and soak worms for suckers, and that's a blast, too. And they're good eating if you put them in the smoker or stuff. Yeah, absolutely, yep. You know, uh, anything up on the big lake, have you heard it all? I know from my reports, I know at least one friend of mine has been up there trolling already, and I'm hearing reports from other guys they've been up there trolling. Yeah, we've been hearing the same thing. Got a handful of guys that are up there trolling. They're catching a couple up there. doesn't sound like anything hot and heavy, but um, they're out on the water up there. When do you think we'll start seeing some guys uh, getting reports back, guys heading for Mississippi and for the Fox River and that stuff? That usually starts happening in March, don't it? Yeah, I would imagine it would be in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, got some guys already talking about prepping for it uh, here in the shop or what have you. Um, grabbing some of the big ripping baits, getting ready to throw the boat out, go looking for some wise, but uh, that's about it. You know, and let's talk about it at the store here. you got a bunch of ice fishing stuff yet, a bunch of good sales going on as we draw to the end of the year, and now you've got all the stuff for the open water too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is the time of year where if you're looking to get something new for yourself, shack, auger, electronics, you know, we've got everything lowest price that we've had all season or what have you, and probably the lowest price you'll see for a while but yeah we're also starting to get some spring stuff ready so we're starting to see a lot of the new stuff come in it's uh it's fun getting the shop geared up for spring because uh you know, it's fun playing with baits even when you're in the shop you know and for people that maybe have a bought a shack years ago they can't believe how much these shacks have changed these portable shelters and insulated and just they're just super nice the time to upgrade i think absolutely i know you know some of the material that the shacks are made out of these days um going just from those old uh Old fabric shacks or what have you that really wouldn't hold heat or anything to these new ones that are all insulated or what have you. They keep you so warm, and it just makes such a difference when you're fishing during the day, whether you be fishing in a full ice suit in one of your old shacks or, you know, these new shacks. You can get them uh, warm enough where you're sitting in there in uh, jeans and a, a hoodie or what have you, and you're feeling comfortable. So, yeah, obviously, if you haven't taken advantage of one of the new shacks by like Clam Otter or Eskimo, you know, any of those will work really well, but uh, definitely get out and take a look at them. Well, you know, it, it may not be a given yet because they, Mother Nature can throw something at us last minute here, but it sure looks like we're going to be out in boats a lot earlier this year than normal, and, you know, there'll be some good fishing out there. You don't have to wait till the opening of fishing season. Absolutely not. You know, I mean, some of those um, those months of April where we have some, some open water out here, those are actually some of your best months to go out and target some panfish, whether it be cold water or not. Um, you know, some really good opportunities to get out there and just do some fishing. You know, and bass fishing. Now that bass season is open year-round, I mean, smallmouth, uh, you may find them a little bit deeper, but on some of the shallower reservoirs and stuff, you're going to find them a little bit shallower. I know one of my guide friends a few years ago, I was going to fish a spot on the Chippewa Flowage on opening day, and I kind of bypassed it because the wind was blowing, and he told me afterwards he went and sat on his spot, and he caught like 50 or more smallmouth one after another out there. So, And they do bunch up. If you find them, they'll be bunched up really in big packs. Yep, yep, a panfish as well. You know, so you know, just in the spring, it's fine the fish. And what do you got new in the shop here we could talk about real quick? Uh, you got a whole bunch of new tackle. I know that every year there's new stuff. Yeah, ab absolutely. Every year there's some new stuff. Um as far as new stuff this year, I mean, we got so Any many... Any panfish stuff? I mean, now you and I like the panfish. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there's going to be some new panfish stuff in here. Um, I got quite a few brands. You know, Z-Man's coming out with a couple new shapes and sizes. Um, there's a couple other baits that I'm failing to draw to mind right now. But, yeah, absolutely, we're going to have some new gear in here. You guys offering uh, rod, uh, real service and stuff or have a place they can send them and stuff, too? If you guys want to come in, I know you'll wind new line on and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. We wind new line on. Uh, we can fix rods or what have you. We have a couple places that we su that we can suggest to uh, send reels off to for repair. But, yeah, if you're looking to uh, wipe the dust off of some of your rod and reels and get them ready for uh, the dances coming spring, we're here for you. 
tons of stuff to think about and getting done. The time's going to run short these few weeks now. We're only weeks, basically. I, I like to talk weeks rather than months. But, you know, we're only weeks away from, you know, open water. And, uh, you know, it's time to start thinking about getting ready. I've been doing it. Yeah, I mean, weeks. I mean, by the time this airs, it's going to be end of February. And, man, haven't those two months gone by fast. It, it feels good to be rolling into March here and starting to think about open water. Well, Jarrett, I want to thank you for coming out here. A lot of good information there. And thanks for having me again, John. Well, folks, you know, we need to take a break right now and hear from some of the fine sponsors that bring their show to you every week. You know, with the ice fishing season wrapping up now and we're looking at open water coming up, we talk with Hayward Area Fishing Guide Tom Lee. So stay tuned. We'll be back right after these messages. Hunters and Anglers, Hayward Bait and Bottle is your one-stop sport and bottle shop in Hayward. They have a huge selection of ice fishing gear, including portable shelters, power augers, electronics, beaver dam tip-ups, ice rods, and just about anything you'll need for ice fishing. They also have archery supplies, bows, crossbows, muzzle loaders, ammo, and much more to help you enjoy the outdoors. While you're there, check out the bottle shop for a full selection of beer, wine, and liquor, too. Hayward Bait and Bottle is your one-stop sport and bottle shop. The Hayward Lakes Visitors and Convention Bureau in Sawyer County, Wisconsin welcomes you to our Northwoods hometown. No matter the season, no matter the activity, you'll always be surrounded by our great outdoors. What more could you ask for in a vacation destination? Woods, waters, world-class events. Contact us for information on lodging, dining, attractions, events, trail conditions, and more. Order your free vacation guide and start planning your getaway today. Visit us at haywardlakes.com or call 1-800-724-2992. Hayward Power Sports has remodeled our service center. This is service manager Damon Schrader. Don't worry, we have the same friendly faces with a service team of 16 highly skilled and certified technicians and a parts inventory that's second to none. We're ready to service and repair your BRP and Polaris machines, plus virtually every major outboard on the planet. And remember, it's always a good idea to think ahead and bring your machines early for the next season. See Hayward Power Sports just 10 minutes east of Hayward on Highway 77 or call 715-462-3674. Welcome back to another segment of this week's Wisconsin Northland Outdoors. And this part of the show is brought to you by the Hayward Lakes Visitor and Convention Bureau. For more information on vacationing and lodging here in the Hayward Lakes area, check out their website at haywardlakes.com. Well, folks, you know, it's looking more and more like we're going to see open water a lot sooner than we normally do, and that's going to present some early open water fishing opportunities for us. On this week's show, we're talking to Hayward Area Fishing Guide Tom Leahy about that, some late ice fishing, and a lot more. We're talking to Hayward Area Fishing Guide Tom Leahy, and Tom, uh, good to have you on the show here again. Oh, good to be on the show, John. You know, this winter has been a kind of a trying winter for our businesses up here at Relate on Winter Stuff. And for the ice fishermen out there, the ice conditions haven't been really good. And that's not just here, but all across the north it's been kind of bad. But, you know, you've been doing some ice fishing, though. Yep, a lot of weekend stuff, uh, getting out there, you know. And it's been a little challenging. There's been three different warm fronts that you had some thicker ice and then it took it. You know, it took three inches off or rotted shorelines, points, uh, where cricks come come in and stuff like that. Real cautious using uh, four-wheelers, anything like that, snowmobiles. Some 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 of the ice fishing I did was just walking um, or using a snowmobile to transport equipment. Lake-dependent, of course. Yeah, I noticed there were some lakes where the ice is even starting to break up even worse than other areas, uh, even a couple around here. But uh, I think we're going to see early ice out this year, maybe, unless things really change over the next uh, few weeks. Yeah, that could be. You know, just who knows this winter. It's uh, a little unpredictable, but definitely mild. You bet. Well, you know, the guys out there fishing uh, on the stream should have a good spring because, uh, you know, the, the streams are going to be uh, pretty easy to get to compared to last year. Yeah. Yeah. And I know when uh, whenever that season opens up, yeah, there'll be a bunch of guys out. I try to get out a little bit and, uh, yeah, throw some uh, Rapalas or, or a little uh, rooster tail sort of thing. And it can be really fun. Catch and release is really promoted. Um, you know, the brown trout and the brookies and all that, but it can be uh, really nice, especially on a 40-degree day, 50-degree day. You bet. Well, you know, there'll be other fishing, too. I, You know, I suspect, and, and I've seen this, so we've seen where we've had our boats in the water easily the first part of April before in the past, and 
uh, you know, just because the fishing season doesn't open until the first weekend in May, there's a lot of fish to be caught out there. You got pan fishing. Now the bass season's open year round, so people can go after those too. And and then there's other fish too, like rough fish. But there's a lot of good fishing to be had if we start to get some warmer weather and once we, weather starts to break here completely and the ice goes. Yep, and it's always uh, always enjoyable. Oh, even just getting the boat ready and yeah, if you can get out, you know, a couple weeks or whatever it may be before opener, which is always the first Saturday in May. Um, yeah, that can be real productive, uh, just as far as just checking on your boat, making sure everything's working correctly instead of having surprises opening day, which happens to a lot of folks. Um, but yeah, and then you have the other opportunities. You know, a lot of guys, they like to go up to Lake Superior out of Washburn or Bayfield and and target some of the, some of the salmon and doing the trout trolling thing there. I know as we're speaking here, one of my friends, one of the guides has already been up there trolling for salmon and trout. So there are some open water places you can get in up there. There is, yes. I know the the one uh, guide out of Ashland. So there's places to get in and that just will get better and better between now and in open water. And then, uh, you know, talk about uh, the pan fishing. Uh, you know, crappies really start to move in once we start warming water and in, in open. That's a really good opportunity to get uh, some good fishing in early. Yep. Well, t- Tom, you know, as far as getting the boat ready, a lot of equipment and gear to get ready. I mean, as guides, we've got a lot more, obviously, than most people have. But, you know, there's a lot to look at, you know, and, and you mentioned the boats. Uh, how many people have you seen over the years that have got their boat out to go fishing and haul it all the way up north and then they're stuck at the boat landing because the thing won't run? I've seen it a bunch of times. Yep, opening weekend, um, yeah, the, the motorsports plays, power sports, John's, Dave's, are always very busy. You bet. You know, and the, one of the things that people overlook really a lot is the wheel bearings. I mean, and, you know, there's nothing worse than a wheel bearing going out when you're traveling, especially. And, you know, people get these bearing buddies and stuff on their trailers, and those things really help. But they get an idea that, you know, they don't need to service the bearings, just shoot some, shoot some grease in there once in a while with a grease gun. And that's not true. So you can have bearing damage in those things, even though you shoot grease in them. So they should be pulled apart every year or two, a couple of years, and gone through and repacked and cleaned and inspected. They should, especially based on the size of your boat. You know, and if if, if folks are, yeah, if they're unwilling or or just unable to, don't know the know-how, yeah, there's, there's businesses in Hayward that do little redo your bearings um all that stuff i think power sports even does some of that for for guys with trailers um or you could always uh look it up on youtube as well you bet well you know and then getting your uh, the rest of your boat ready i know this year i've been working on my boats because i'm switching all of my battery power over on both boats both my big uh, lund impact and then my little rebel i'm switching them all over to amped outdoors lithium batteries uh, because i just wanted to go that route and uh, you know that I want the more reliable power in my boat because I got so much electronics on it. And that's one thing a person could do is look at your, you know, upgrading your equipment, uh, whether it's depth finders or anything else, and make sure that everything is up to snuff on it and, you know, make sure your outboard is, is ready to go too. Yep, for sure, John. You know, uh, the other thing too, equipment, uh, gear and equipment. Uh, how often do you change like braided line? We got braided line on a lot of rods now and, I tend to go more than one season on this stuff because it seems like it wears a lot better. But it used to be we changed line almost every year, but it doesn't seem to have to anymore with some of the newer lines. Yeah, with some with some of the newer lines like the spider wire um, and or oh yeah, there's different different uh, thirty pound, forty pound, but small diameter braids. It seems like depending on normal use sometimes above average use it changes things especially when you're guiding um but i think you know a lot of guys are yeah maybe every other season not not just every it depends how many birds nests or uh snags you get and yeah you end up losing half your spool well then you just got to put on new line anyway you bet but uh yeah a little different story when it comes to yeah if you have if your your jigging rod just has e pound monofilament whatever that is um, especially with, yeah, using that all season and it got stored out in the garage where it's hot and cold and, 
Yeah, you definitely want to be considering um, switching that out, especially if your spools are, are half full or not even, um, and just for, you know, in case you don't want to lose the big one. You bet. Well, you know, and I'm using a lot of braid now with a fluorocarbon leader on tied, you know, learn how to tie the knots, you know, like a double uni knot. And there's others to join up, you know, 10, 15 feet of fluorocarbon on the end of your braided line. You know, you can have all that stuff ready to go and, you know, re-spooled up and, and then, you know, put some oil or lube in your reels. Uh, some of your reels are getting pretty expensive now, especially some of your musky reels. Uh, learn learn how to take them apart and grease them and service them. Or there's some places that you can actually send them or take them in to have that done too. But they just last a lot longer. It's like your car. You, you don't go without changing oil in your car. So you know, why, why run that $400 reel or that $200 reel, whatever you've got? Why run it without uh, servicing it and checking it over? Oh, exactly. Just just simple maintenance, and that comes to your reels, your line, um, even even some of the musky line. You know, halfway through the season, or a lot of time, if you want to get a couple, two or three years out of your musky line, depending on what it is, a lot of guys will uh, take that line right off, do a new backing, and then go the opposite direction with that line. Um, that can be that can be a money saver too if you just don't want to spend the money on getting new line reverse it you bet you know and let's go back to the fishing a little bit you know we mentioned the things about we'll have some open water fishing here but there's getting to be quite a few people that head off to other areas uh, to go fishing uh, over to the mississippi river over to the fox river uh, quite a few guys head over to that fox river over to our green bay you know even getting into march and april because the fishing over there for walleyes is is fantastic it's some big fish yep a lot of guys u- utilize the opportunities of being able to fish while while they're spawning before they're spawning and a little bit after and um up here in hayward we can't do that there's none of that going on but if you're willing to travel pestigo river box to pier um wolf river wisconsin river those are some areas you get the opportunity to chase some of those walleyes you know, one of the you know last places I think had people head for too is up toward Rainy River, but that's usually late, a little bit later in the season. But that's some really good fishing up there too. Yep, same same thing. They have the opportunity to to fish walleyes when uh, yeah when when they're closed, uh, you know, until May or whatever. So, yeah. but uh, great chance to get some big ones and and what, whatever you're doing especially you know if you're fishing them before they're spawning or during or um and even after always consider letting those big female walleyes uh go uh, not just walleyes but uh, crappies and everything else i i'm trying to tell people the 12 inch and up crappies throw them back and the nine inch and up bluegills throw them back because those are the oldest fish out there uh, it took a lot of years to get that big uh, all they can do is, you know, make more fish and get bigger. So, you know, if you get if you take them out of the system, they're gone. So, it's it's if you want to see some bigger fish, we need to start throwing back bigger fish. Yes, and that's preserving a, a very quality genetic gene pool, basically. Um, yeah, those those larger reproducing fish. Um, yeah, if everyone kept the big one. Well, then there wouldn't be any big ones. We've seen that. We've got lakes that we see that on, too. Well, Tom, a, a lot of great information there from you. Uh, you want to give out some guide information for uh, coming up this uh, open water season or the ice fishing? Uh, how somebody get a hold of you if they're interested in hiring you for a guide? Yeah, you can reach me at 715-558-6755. Well, Tom, a pleasure having you on here on the show again. We have you on here quite often, and uh, let's hope we get a chance to get out and do some early wa- open water fishing here because, uh, you know, we just want to get out. And I love to fish, and I think you do too, and a lot of the people that hear the show would like to get out and fish, and you, we could do that a lot easier in a boat. Oh, exactly, and looking forward to it. Yep, last ice and fishing in a boat. Yep. Well, Tom, thanks for coming on here. All right. Thank you, John. Well, folks, you know, we need to take yet another break and hear from even more of the fine sponsors that make this show possible every week. When we come back, we'll have even more on your outdoors. So stay tuned. We'll be back right after these messages. 
Hey folks, come on over to Hayward Ace Hardware and check out the area's largest selection of firearms, ammo, and accessories. We carry top brands like Browning and Sig Sawyer, and we have a great selection of the newest and hard-to-find models. We've got a large selection of ammo with more coming in daily. If you need a scope, we carry great brands like Leupold, Hawk, and EOTech, and we'll even mount it and bore sight it for you too. We even sell suppressors and silencers. And don't forget to check out our Guns of the Week. Huge discounts on a variety of pistols, rifles, and shotguns that change every week. So stop on in to Hayward Ace Hardware, your firearm superstore. Hayward Ace Hardware, Highway 63 North in Hayward, or give us a call at 715-634-8700. Hayward Animal Hospital is a full-service medical and surgical hospital featuring on-site laboratory, digital and dental x-ray, in-house pharmacy, and online store. Dr. Ostrander has 40 years of experience dealing with illnesses, injuries, surgery, and dentistry. Hayward Animal Hospital offers urgent care appointments and emergency surgery daily. Please call early in the day for these appointments. They open at 8 a.m. Hayward Animal Hospital is located one mile east of Hayward on Highway B. Call 715-634-8971. If you'd like to have your time fishing be more enjoyable and productive, hiring a fishing guide can be a good investment. Whether it's learning more about fish patterns throughout the year, learning how to use your depth finder to find the best spots and fish, learn how to use that GPS to get the most out of it, or learn better boat control. A day on the water with a guide can really help you to be a better angler as well as make a day on the lake very enjoyable. To book a guide trip this year or get more information, you can find us on the internet at www.wiscnorthlandoutdoors.com and then just click on Area Guides. Welcome back to the last segment of this week's Wisconsin Northland Outdoors. Well, folks, you know the way the winter's been so far and the lack of ice that's out there on our lakes, it's likely we will see open water early this year. And if we do get that open water, you don't need to wait till the fishing season opener on the first Saturday of May. There'll be some good fishing out there, especially for panfish and even largemouth and smallmouth bass. On this week's show, we talk with Hayward Area Fishing Guide Steve Jensen about some of the early open water fishing that's out there that you can get in on. Steve, you know, sooner or later we're going to have open water, and one of the first things available usually is panfish. Yeah, you bet. And, you know, we're blessed here in our area, John. We have great pan fishing, some of the best crappie fishing that I know of, and there's good bluegill and perch fishing here as well. And obviously it gives you a little jump on the season because the pan fish season is never closed here. So if we do get some open water prior to that open game fish season, it gives anglers an opportunity to get out and enjoy the spring. What do you look for out there when you're at warm water is one of the key factors, right? Oh, always. You know, you want to look for warming water. Uh, typically, you'll find, you know, big, large, shallow flats, larger areas that have that shallow water um, that will warm up quicker. will generally hold more fish than the smaller spots. So I kind of look for that. And, you know, use your eyes. The fish are in generally shallower water. So you have a good idea when you're around fish. They'll, you'll disturb them. You'll spook them. You'll see the schools. Um, so just pay attention to what's going on, on around you, and you'll usually find those fish pretty shallow. Usually right after ice out, sometimes you get a warming trend, they'll move shallow, but then they move back out away from there again. They're not up shallow to spawn, but they will come back in to spawn. Yep, absolutely. That first movement is basically just for temperature. They're trying to heat up the metabolism, get moving, get their blood flowing, so, so to speak. And um, as the temperature gradually warms, you'll see those fish pull offshore. Once they get ready to spawn, you'll see them kind of work their way back in, and then you'll have the actual spawning process. So it certainly is a process, and, you know, Mother Nature dictates that. You have warming days, the fish will come in. You have cooling days, they move out. So it's certainly no cut and dry thing, but uh, you'll certainly see movements of those fish from shallow to deep. Anything particular you notice that works better for them in that first run when they come in shallow? You know, really, it's just a matter of being stealthy. Um, smaller seems to work better than larger, and basically it's just because the fish are positioned in very shallow water, so they're a little bit spookier. Um, so small, subtle presentation, small plastic on ice jigs um, that you can deliver into shallow water without spooking the fish is usually the best bet. Well, Steve, I want to thank you uh, for uh, talking to us here. You betcha. Anytime. And uh, if anybody's information on Steve, you can always get information on his guide service down at Hayward Bait and Bottle. You betcha. Hayward Bait and Bottle Shop or fishhunts.com. Thanks a lot. Well, folks, you know, we're about out of time for this week's show. I'd like to remind everyone out there that if you miss a show, go to our website at wnoradio.com. And from there, you can link to our podcast site. And the show is also on Spotify and Google Podcasts every week. And also, if you're looking for information on vacationing and lodging here in the Hayward Lakes area, check out the Hayward Lakes Visitor and Convention Bureau website at haywardlakes.com. Thanks for listening, folks. We're out of time, and we'll be back again next week with another interesting show for you. Listen with me, I'm going to take you there to our Wisconsin outdoors, our Wisconsin outdoors. 
This program has been produced and hosted entirely by Wisconsin Northland Outdoor Communications. Any and all views expressed are not necessarily those of the station.